<coughs> well, good afternoon. I'm today joined by Assistant Commissioner Ian Parrott as well. So Operation Safe Long Weekend will be running this weekend. We know that South Australians will certainly love to get into our, especially our regional areas, uh, this long weekend. Uh, but as our, our tourists will be out this weekend, so will our South Australian police, making sure that they keep an eye uh, that South Australians are doing the right thing on our roads. We know that uh, this year, unfortunately, we've lost 17 lives on our roads, uh, compared with 16 lives lost at the same time last year. When you look at the last five years uh, of this weekend, the last five years' work, uh, we've lost six lives uh, on our roads. So six lives lost over five years. And when you break down uh, the cause of, of most of those deaths, you can certainly attribute that, unfortunately, to one of the fatal five. You know, things like not wearing a seatbelt. I mean, it is absolutely unbelievable today, in this day and age, that some people think it's okay to not wear a seatbelt. It's not. Make sure you wear your seatbelt. If you do just the little things this long weekend on our roads, you make sure that you save not only your life, but also potentially the lives of others. We know that any life lost on our roads is a complete tragedy. It's a tragedy uh, for the victim's families, of those that are involved, but also our first responders, uh, our police and our other emergency services workers. So what we're imploring South Australians to do this weekend is by all means, please do get out, enjoy our beautiful regional areas, but please do the right thing on our roads. Uh, we've all got a responsibility to do the right thing on our roads, especially on a long weekend, when we know that more people will be out uh, than, than usual. So remember things like, you know, you don't need to access your mobile phone when you're driving. Make sure that you do wear a seatbelt. As I said, uh, one of the, the deaths that we've seen over the last five years on this weekend is because somebody didn't wear a seatbelt. Uh, enough is enough. Make sure you do the little things. If you're driving for extensive periods of time, please make sure that you know, take, take a break every couple of hours. Make sure uh, that you do the right thing on our roads. Let's enjoy uh, this weekend. Let's get through it together. I'll now pass on to AC Parrott and I'll be happy to take any questions. Thanks, Minister. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, as the Minister said, uh, South Australian Police, uh, as you would expect, uh, will be out in force again this following weekend. Uh, six lives lost uh, over the last five years uh, during the March long weekend. Uh, I can only imagine um, the heartbreak that, that that anniversary brings to the families of those whose uh, lives have been lost in previous years. But we certainly don't want any other family or any other person to be experiencing the same thing, not only this year, uh, but in future years to come as a, as a reminder each year of, of what happened on the March long weekend. Um, interestingly, of the six deaths that have occurred over the last five years, five of the six have occurred uh, on regional roads. Now, you might think that that's um, people driving from the city not necessarily used to driving on regional roads, but the other uh, startling factor really is, is that all five of those deaths on regional roads have been uh, involved people who live in the regions, including one person who lived in the same area of the roads they were travelling on when their life was lost. So it's not just about people travelling to the regions, it's about uh, people in regional areas as well. But also there's a lot of activity happening uh, in the metropolitan area at the moment with the fringe. Um, we certainly encourage people to get out and enjoy yourself, but don't drink or drug drive. Um, certainly wear your seatbelt, as the Minister has said. Um, uh, and probably uh, in, the, in the regional areas, the one thing that uh, we see time and time again is that people don't do the appropriate planning for their trip. And what happens then is they put themselves in a, in a situation where they start to run late. And once you start to run late to where you can get to your destination, people take unnecessary risks. And that's where you can come unstuck very easily. On regional roads, if you take risks at 100 or 110 kilometres an hour, it's not going to end well for you. So our message is that police are going to be out in force uh, from midnight tonight uh, through until midnight Monday night. Uh, we'll be focusing on both mobile and static drink and drug driving. We'll be having a heavy focus on regional roads, given the, uh, the past and, the, and also the sorry the past lives lost, but also the potential uh, for uh, serious injury crashes or fatal crashes on our regional roads. Uh, and we'll be paying particular attention to um, those fatal five offences. For those of you who are travelling from the metropolitan area or to the regions or from region to region. Do a bit of research about the roads that you've been travelling on. There are quite a number of roadworks out in the areas which will slow you down. So 
plan that interview trip so that you don't have to take unnecessary risks and arrive safely at your destination. The last thing we want you to do is to spend your weekend uh, with us, or worse, not make it home after this long weekend. Um, 17 lives lost so far this year is far too many. Uh, let's please make uh, this long weekend a safe and fatality free weekend. Is Mark's long weekend traditionally one of the, the busier ones, or is it not as busy because things have gone up the holidays or what it's just I think any long weekend is a really great opportunity to get away and explore um, either the close um, like the metropolitan area or the outer metropolitan region, the regional areas. Um, we do see an increase in regional travel on any long weekend. Um, as we said, the, the March long weekend over the last five years, uh, there's been six lives lost. Um, we certainly don't want to repeat of that um, in any instance. Two lives lost last year in particular. Um, I think the last time a, um, the, uh, we had a fatality free weekend was in 2019. We want to repeat that again this year. We want everybody to please be safe, take your time, don't take unnecessary risks. Do you think this March long weekend <coughs> might be busier than previous ones with people choosing to stay home, holiday at home with, you know, for example, the uncertainty around COVID and possible border closures? Yeah, look, we're prepared for probably every um, uh, eventual outcome of, of what that might look like. Um, I think certainly there's a great opportunity for people to visit the regions at the moment. There's even interstate travel has been relaxed a bit as well. So we certainly anticipate uh, people taking advantage of that and we encourage people to go to our regional areas. But we're not um, just focusing on the regional areas as well. There's a lot of great activity happening within the, within the city and the metropolitan area at the moment. Uh, so there might be a bit of temptation for people to think, oh, maybe I might take a, a risk in the metropolitan area because all the police are focusing on the regions. Um, don't be fooled. Uh, we will be out in force both in the metropolitan area and also in the regions policing this weekend. Yeah, look, I, I, to describe it, my way, I think it's just quite one way to think it's selfish. Um, you know, it, it's one of those things that um, is difficult to understand, particularly if you've got precious cargo in the back of the car, you know, kids, um, spouse, partner, friends, whatever. Um, and this is why I think it's really important to come back to that planning element. Um, you might think that your usual trip to Rome or your usual trip to um, Mount Remarkable or somewhere else uh, takes you a certain amount of time. But if you haven't gone on to say the transport website and found out that there's road work to say on the Duke's Highway or something like that, which is going to slow your trip down, if you're planning to arrive at a certain time and you're running late, then you're much more tempted to take risks. So um, there's a couple of options here. Plan, um, allow yourself some extra time to get to your destination. And the other thing is if you do actually start to run behind time, then if you need to let someone know, perhaps use that as an opportunity to rest every two hours. Whilst you're resting, out of the car, perhaps make a phone call to let people know you're running late. And then once you're refreshed, you've actually reset your expectations, taken a fresh off yourself, and then get back in the car and drive safely to your destination. Um, there's just been a, an update. Uh, there's been a crash at Madden, where I'm not sure if you've got all the details, but um, the driver has fled the scene. This follows a series of crashes we've had lately, drivers crashing and then fleeing the scene. Any thoughts on you know, this trend that seems to be emerging? Uh, look, I think that um, there is a certain element of our society uh, who um, have a complete disregard for themselves and other road users. So yesterday's crash at, at Manon is an example of that, uh, where a particular individual uh, has driven in a very reckless and dangerous manner. Um, uh, the police have actually observed that, uh, that behaviour, but um, prior to being in, in any position to actually uh, pursue the vehicle or follow it, uh, that vehicle has taken off um, and basically collided with an innocent motorist. Um, the, the, the photographs of that particular crash scene are um, incredible. They are absolutely ridiculous. The car split in two, which is the offending car, um, and a, an innocent motorist uh, minding their own business um, cleaned up by someone who's uh, driving absolutely irresponsibly. Uh, there's just no excuse for that. Um, fortunately, uh, the innocent driver, uh, I understand, is, is in a stable condition in the uh, Royal Adelaide Hospital, and I, I understand might be able to be released later today. Uh, and we are still looking for the driver of the offending vehicle. Um, we have some very strong needs, and we're confident that we'll catch up in the soon. What's your message to that driver? Um, don't drive like an idiot. Um, you know, you've, how you've escaped this crash unscathed is beyond me. Um, how you actually haven't uh, killed an innocent person and um, uh, potentially 
you know, find yourself in jail for a significant period of time is beyond me. Um, and the other thing is, uh, um, we know who you are, we are looking for you. Um, make it easier on yourself and uh, hand yourself up to the police station. Because what do you think about what we've been seeing lately? I mean, at least four <coughs> crashes, hit run crashes, where the driver has got out of the car and run off. What do you make of that? Uh, what I make of that is that uh, it is um, some extremely selfish behaviour um, by certain individuals who have no regard for their own safety, uh, for their passengers, uh, for other people um, using the roads. Uh, it is essentially a criminal act um, in terms of their, the way they're driving and, and the damage and the, and the carnage that, that they're causing. Do you think the penalties are tough enough for those that choose to flee the scene of an accident, as we've been seeing lately? Yeah, look, um, the penalties is certainly an issue for the court um, uh, to, to deal with that. Um, uh, I think that the, the message that's lost on people is that if you are involved in a crash like this, um, you are likely to end up with some significant consequences, um, the least of which um, potentially are the ones that the legal system throws at you. Um, the other consequences that people can have is a, a lifelong impairment. Um, you know, caring responsibilities of family or other members are significant costs, uh, and then of course the ultimate, uh, the ultimate consequence is that uh, you're only around to tell the story. So, um, yeah, please, um, we know that uh, the vast majority of people uh, do absolutely the right thing and, and attempt to do the right thing, and it certainly is, um, uh, it certainly is a tragedy when innocent people get caught up in such irresponsible behaviour. Just uh, on the same, state coroner. Do you know how much longer this investigation will now take? Uh, no, I don't have the exact details uh, on how long the investigation will take. Um, uh, you know, when a, when a death occurs, um, we provide a report to the coroner. Um, it's not uncommon for the coroner to sometimes ask for additional things to be done, additional things to be looked at. So it's, it's a business as usual uh, type of approach. Mm -hmm. And uh, based on the report, it says that the information provided was determined incomplete. It, do you acknowledge at all that it wasn't perhaps done thoroughly on? Uh, no, look, I don't think that's the case. Like I said, it's a business as usual process where we're doing an initial investigation and it certainly is the coroner's role to um, ask us for additional information where they see fit and that's exactly what we're doing. So you're continuing assisting the investigation? Uh, absolutely, it's a business as usual thing, yeah. Just on the Dove Gardens uh, breaking, are you okay to comment on that as well? Uh, I don't have too many details on that other than I know that we have arrested four people uh, in quick time in relation to the breaking. Um, the motivation uh, behind it, well, I'm not really sure. So we're not entirely sure whether the four intruders are known to the victim yet? It's too early days, or? Uh, I, I uh, believe it's not a random um, issue, um, and certainly um, those four people were arrested in very quick time, some great work by our local police. Excellent. How terrifying must it have been, because not only the often, but the, the people in the neighbourhood who had four people running across <coughs> their roofs as well? Uh, yeah, I think uh, anyone would uh, think that it's um, slightly unusual, certainly frightening to have anyone running across your roof, uh, other than perhaps about Christmas. So, yeah. But I think just on just on the um, just on the Madden crash, I reckon that's at least four hit run crashes we've had in the past couple of weeks. Any idea why this seems to keep happening? Uh, people just think they can get away with it, or uh, I think quite simply is that. Uh, People are just not taking responsibility for their actions and they're trying to hide, they're trying to escape, and trying to avoid potentially uh, significant penalties which will face them when we catch up them and we will. And again, those penalties in your view aren't tough enough as they currently stand? So there's a, there's a range of different criminal offences and, and road traffic offences which are applicable for us to apply the law to um, what we need to do in terms of holding people accountable and then it's up to the courts to make sure that the, uh, uh, the penalties are appropriate for the circumstances. Specifically leaving the scene of an accident? Uh, yeah, correct. There's legislation in place for Yes. Minister, um, just on human driving, any update? So again, we encourage people to think road safety this long weekend. In terms of human driving, uh, we know that unfortunately there are some people out there who uh, think that it is okay to be reckless, dangerous and stupid on our roads. And for those people, I can tell you that uh, we're working uh, with the Attorney, Attorney General and also uh, the Minister for Transport will certainly, and the South Australian Police, and will certainly be coming back to the Parliament uh, with some significant uh, legislation to make sure that people are punished uh, for those crimes. How quickly could we see those new laws take effect? Did they pass? 
So we want to make sure that we get the, the laws right and we want to make sure that we do consult with uh, South Australia Police and also uh, Attorney General and the Minister for Transport. So I would anticipate something being, certainly being uh, introduced to the Parliament in, in a matter of months. And how important are these new laws to you know, send a message? The, the majority of South Australians do the right thing on our roads, but unfortunately, for whatever reason, for some uh, reckless, dangerous, stupid people, the message is not getting clear. And that's why uh, we'll certainly be making sure uh, that we bring in legislation to make sure that that uh, reflects uh, community standards and sentiments. So we'll be bringing in uh, a bill to the House uh, uh, this part uh, over the next few months, I would anticipate. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.